Thanks for tuning in. Today, I'll be addressing the false gospel promoted by Josh Bice. Josh Bice is the founder of the G3 Conference. If you know anything about the G3 Conference, the G3 Conference is Antichrist. Um, it promotes a false gospel. It's always known to invite false teachers like John MacArthur, uh, Vody Bauckham, Steve Lawson, etc., etc. But uh, today we'll go over what Bice actually calls the gospel. Um, he gets the gospel wrong. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, Jesus Christ said to his sheep um, in Matthew 7 that we would be able to identify false teachers by their fruit, their fruit being their doctrine and their doctrine on the gospel. And Josh uh, claims to teach the gospel, but he actually perverts it and gets it wrong. You'll see in this video how he pre presents a false gospel that makes no mention of uh, election, who Jesus actually died for, and he conditions his false gospel on the sinner, and he makes faith, belief, um, the cause and grounds of salvation. So let's go ahead and just watch it, and then I'll give my comments. I'm preaching today on the gospel. I think we should take some time to define the gospel. In fact, when we think about the confused culture in which we live, when you ask people questions about salvation and you ask them questions about eternal life, they don't know what the gospel is. In fact, Barna Research Group several years ago asked people about their own condition before God, and this is what they stated. In their report, they said that more than half of all adults, 53%, in America, believe that if a person is generally good or does enough good things for others during their life, they will earn a place in heaven. So I simply want to stop and ask this morning, when you die, and if it happens while I'm preaching, and an ambulance comes and takes you out on a stretcher, and you're pronounced dead on arrival at the local hospital, where will you spend eternity? In fact, before the ambulance gets there, where will you be? In heaven or in hell? And when you answer that right now, and I'm asking you to, on what basis do you give the answer? If you answered hell, and you said on the, on the basis of my wicked life, then I would say I agree. If you said heaven... Now he's talking about basis. This is very interesting because when he's done giving his false gospel presentation, he doesn't make any explanation um, showing that the basis of uh, being with Christ after a person dies is based solely on the imputed righteousness of Christ given by God's free and sovereign grace to his elect. He says nothing about this. On the basis of my good life, I would say, I fear for your soul this morning. You will not enter the kingdom of heaven on your own good deeds. What you deserve for your own good deeds is eternal hell and nothing more than that. Defining the gospel it was asked on a college campus, a group of college students, to define the gospel. And they, many of them gave answers like this. Well, um, um, like, um, I'm not really, um, sure. Others responded, well, I think the gospel is, you know, it's, it's Jesus, right? And some said, well, isn't that a type of music, you know, gospel music I've heard of that others responded and said well I'm not really sure because I'm not a very religious person so we live in a day and we live in an age where people simply don't know what the gospel is so when you say I'm not yes we do live in an age and a time where people don't know what the gospel is and you're one of them Josh Bice is a false teacher he doesn't even know the gospel and he's telling people 
They don't know the gospel. He doesn't even know the gospel. He teaches a false gospel. But we thank God, the elect. We thank God because Jesus Christ died and rose. And everyone that Jesus Christ died for will be with God for eternity. And they will believe the gospel. They will believe the gospel. Why? Because it's conditioned on Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, or we sing a song about the gospel, or I announce that my sermon is about the gospel. People don't know what it is. The word gospel, as it appears in the Bible, is euangelion in the Greek. It literally means good news. That's the definition of it. Good news. The first time that we see the word in the New Testament is in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, and it says, And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming, here it is, the word, the gospel, the good news, of the kingdom, and then healing every disease and every affliction among the people. In Mark's Gospel, the first time we see the word gospel is in the very first verse. He doesn't even wait any time before he just simply says it. And in Mark 1.1, 1, 1, he says the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So define the gospel and you insert the definition into that verse and it's the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So you want to know what the, the study that we're going through on Sunday mornings is about? It's about the good news of Jesus Christ. It is about the good news of Christ. Okay, and what is this good news? We're going to see. When the angels appeared in the night sky and the, the, the shepherds were out tending to their herds by night, and the angels appeared and they announced the birth of Jesus. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, we see that it says, And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people, so not just for Jews, for Jew and Gentile, for a church that would later be assembled right here on this very campus, 2015, on this rainy Sunday morning. The good news is that Jesus Christ has provided the necessities that God the Father required so that your sins could be forgiven. So the gospel is not a genre of music, a type of, of preaching. The gospel is not walking down an aisle, getting in a baptistry, signing a card. Jesus Christ has provided so that your sins could be taken care of. Who is Bice, who is Bice talking to? Bice doesn't know if these people are elect. Bice doesn't know if Jesus died for them. So how can he say that? This is what Bice is doing. He's, he's setting up his conditional, false, universal gospel. See, he's made it universal. He doesn't know whether all these people, Jesus has died for them. Only God knows. Only God knows. We share the gospel. A Christian shares the gospel to everyone. To everyone. However, it's a proclamation of who Jesus is and what he did for his people. What he did for his sheep. Only. You share it to everyone, but you don't go up to random people or if you're um, um, sharing to a group of people and saying, oh, well, Jesus did this for all of us. He did this. He provided this. He provided this for you. And then you go into your false gospel spiel. This is what Bice is doing. He's making it universal and see how he ends it by making it conditioned on the people that are listening. We need more than music when we stand before God. We need more than a card that has your name written on it in a filing cabinet in a local church when you stand before God. You need more than attending church on a Sunday when you stand before the King of Glory. What is the gospel? The gospel is the fact that the second person of the Godhead Holy God of all creation clothed himself in human flesh, in human flesh, and was crushed under the wrath of the Father in a painful substitutionary sacrifice for hopeless sinners. This is what sinners? What sinners, Bice? What sinners? Oh, he's about to tell you. He's going to tell you the sinners Jesus Jesus supposedly died for. The Bible says Jesus 
lays down his life for his sheep. Very specific. Christ gave himself up for his church. Very specific. Ephesians chapter 5. John, John 10. Jesus lays down his sheep, his life for his sheep. All that the Father have given to him. Those are the ones uh, Christ saved. But Bice doesn't say that. He's setting up his universal potential and condition on the sinner false gospel. The gospel that he was buried and that on the third day, very God of very God, God in human flesh, in a tomb, was raised from the dead. And right now is, has already ascended to the right hand of the Father. It is in a place of authority and power and sovereignty and is able to save any and all who come to him in faith. Wow. Wow. Jesus Christ is able to save any and those who come to him in faith. So coming, coming to Jesus Christ in faith is what causes salvation. You see what I'm talking about? He has conditioned salvation on a person coming to Jesus Christ in faith, as if faith is the cause of salvation. If you know the true gospel, you can read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Faith is not the cause of salvation. It's the fruit of salvation. The cause of salvation is the imputed righteousness of Christ, the merit of Christ. Salvation is conditioned on Jesus Christ. And God imputes the right righteousness of Christ to his elect by his sovereign grace. That's the cause of salvation. Not those who come to Jesus in faith. And, and, and it's not an offer to everyone. It's a complete work. But you see what Bice did? You see what Bice did? That is the gospel. No, it's not. That is not the gospel. That is not the gospel. Josh Bice, as you can see from his own mouth, teaches a false gospel. Please read what the true gospel is in the, the description part of this video. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John in the Bible to get what the true gospel is. Thank you for watching.